Have you ever pondered the question, where did life on Earth originate? It's an inquiry as old as humanity itself, a riddle that has captivated the minds of philosophers, theologians, and scientists alike. The traditional viewpoint, the one most commonly held, posits that life began right here on this blue planet of ours. It's a theory we've been touting for centuries, one that suggests life emerged from the primordial soup of Earth's early oceans, spurred on by a cocktail of chemical reactions and a generous helping of time. This view, this abiogenesis, has been a cornerstone of our understanding for a good long while. It's been painted in textbooks, taught in classrooms, and it's the story we've told ourselves about our beginnings. It's a tale of life springing forth from the elemental loam of complex organisms evolving from simple molecules of us, humans, as the end product of billions of years of terrestrial evolution. But what if that's not the whole story? You see, whilst the theory of abiogenesis is compelling, it's not without its share of questions and limitations. For starters, it's a process that's been notoriously difficult to replicate in a laboratory setting. Scientists have been trying for decades to recreate the conditions of early Earth, to coax life from non-life, but success has been elusive. We've made strides, sure, but we're still grappling with the how, the when, and the why. The very complexity of life itself poses another conundrum. How did life leap from simple organic molecules to the intricate, self-replicating systems we see today? It's a leap that's hard to fathom, a gap in our understanding that's yet to be satisfactorily bridged. And then, there's the issue of time. Did Earth's early environment really provide the billions of years necessary for life to take root and flourish? Or was the window of opportunity much narrower? But what if life didn't start here at all? What if it came from the vast expanse of the cosmos? Enter the panspermia hypothesis, a theory that suggests life didn't originate on Earth, but was delivered from outer space. An intriguing proposition, isn't it? This scenario paints a picture of life as an interstellar traveler, journeying across the cosmos, riding on the back of comets or hidden within meteorites, before making a landing on our blue planet. The idea of panspermia, which literally means seeds everywhere, is as fascinating as it is bold. It suggests that the seeds of life microscopic organisms or their precursors are universally dispersed. These life-carrying particles, resilient and patient, could survive the harsh conditions of space and the journey across the cosmos, only to bloom when they encounter a hospitable environment. In this context, Earth would just be one of many celestial bodies where these seeds have found a suitable home. Panspermia posits that life on Earth may have been seeded by these cosmic voyages potentially billions of years ago. Rather than life sparking into existence in the proverbial primordial soup here on Earth, it might have hitched a ride on a comet or an asteroid ultimately crash-landing into our planet's early oceans. Imagine the possibilities. If life can travel through space, it could mean that the universe teems with potential life-bearing worlds. This theory could also provide an explanation for the rapid emergence of life on Earth, shortly after the planet cooled down enough to support it. But where did these seeds of life originate? Were they the product of another Earth-like planet? or did they form in the cold void of space itself? These questions lead us further down the rabbit hole of cosmic mysteries, stirring up more curiosity and wonder about our place in the universe. Could it be that Earth was merely a fertile ground, ready and waiting for the seeds of life to take root? The panspermia hypothesis, while still a subject of debate, certainly gives us a lot to ponder about our cosmic origins and the nature of life itself. Imagine for a moment microbial life hitching a ride on a comet, surviving the harsh conditions of space and landing on a young Earth. This is a journey not for the faint-hearted. It's a trip that takes the concept of resilience and survival 
to a whole new level. Imagine, if you will, a microscopic organism, no bigger than a speck of dust, embarking on this great cosmic voyage. This journey is not measured in miles or kilometers, but in light years, a distance so vast it's almost incomprehensible. Now picture the harsh conditions of space. It's a realm of absolute cold, where temperatures can plunge to hundreds of degrees below freezing. It's a place of utter darkness, save for the distant twinkle of stars. It's a vacuum, devoid of air and water, the very elements that are fundamental to life as we know it. Yet, these tiny passengers are not ordinary life forms. They are extremophiles, organisms that thrive in conditions lethal to most life on Earth. They can withstand extreme temperatures, intense radiation, and prolonged periods of dehydration. These characteristics make them the perfect candidates for the panspermia hypothesis. The journey these particles undertake is fraught with danger. They must survive not only the initial ejection from their home planet, but they must also endure the violent collision with another celestial body. They must then survive the tumultuous descent through the planet's atmosphere, a process that generates heat intense enough to incinerate most objects. But if these sturdy little travelers manage to survive all of this, they find themselves on an alien world. Here, they must adapt to new conditions, compete with native life forms, and contribute to the development of life on the planet. It's a tale of survival against all odds, a cosmic journey with the ultimate payoff, life as we know it. The panspermia hypothesis is fascinating, but does it hold water in the face of scientific scrutiny? Let's dive into the evidence that supports this hypothesis. Some researchers point to extremophiles, organisms that thrive in extreme conditions as potential panspermic life. These hardy creatures can survive in the vacuum of space, enduring radiation, freezing temperatures, and other harsh conditions. This resilience suggests life might indeed travel between planets or even star systems. Further support comes from the discovery of amino acids in meteorites. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, essential components of all known life. Their presence in space rocks provides a tantalizing hint that the ingredients for life might be widespread in the cosmos. But what about the evidence contradicting the panspermia hypothesis? Well, one significant hurdle is the vast distances between stars. Even if life could survive a journey through space, the odds of it landing on a habitable planet and taking root are incredibly slim. Moreover, Critics argue that the presence of amino acids in meteorites does not necessarily mean life exists elsewhere. These organic compounds could form through non-biological processes like chemical reactions in space. So, while their presence is intriguing, it's not definitive proof of extraterrestrial life. There's also the issue of contamination. It's challenging to ensure that any life forms or organic compounds found on meteorites haven't been contaminated by Earth's own biology. This makes it difficult to confirm if these findings genuinely originate from space or if they're merely terrestrial interlopers. Within the scientific community, debates continue to rage. Some scientists argue that the panspermia hypothesis is a cop-out, a way to push the question of life's origin into the distant cosmos rather than addressing it here on Earth. Others, however, see it as a compelling explanation for how life could spread throughout the universe. In the end, while the panspermia hypothesis is backed by some intriguing evidence, it also faces significant challenges. It's a captivating idea that sparks our imagination, but as of now, it remains just that, an idea. The panspermia hypothesis, while intriguing, still has many questions that need answering. So, what have we learned about the panspermia hypothesis? Well, let's take a step back and consider this intriguing idea. The panspermia hypothesis posits that life as we know it didn't originate from our home planet, Earth. 
Instead, it suggests that life may have hitched a ride on cosmic dust or asteroids, journeying across the vast expanse of space to find a new home here. This hypothesis is remarkable in its audacity, painting a picture of life as a cosmic voyager. It challenges the notion of Earth as a unique cradle of life, and instead presents us with a universe that could be teeming with life-carrying particles. Imagine, if you will, microbial life forms or their precursors surviving the harsh conditions of space, possibly even being shielded by the very cosmic dust or asteroids they travel on. Scientifically, the panspermia hypothesis is still a topic of ongoing debate. There's currently no definitive evidence to confirm or refute it. However, it's important to note that it's not outside the realm of possibility. In fact, studies have shown that certain microorganisms can survive in space for extended periods of time. Moreover, we've found complex organic molecules, the building blocks of life, on comets and meteorites, but we also need to acknowledge the limitations. For instance, surviving the journey is one thing, but what about the impact on arrival? Could life really survive the violent crash landing on a planet? And even if it did, could it then adapt and thrive in a completely alien environment? Nonetheless, the panspermia hypothesis continues to inspire and intrigue us. It's a testament to our insatiable curiosity about the universe and our place within it. It urges us to consider the possibility that we are, in a way, extraterrestrial. Whether you believe life on Earth started in the depths of space or in a primordial soup, one thing is for certain. The question of our origins continues to captivate us, pushing us to explore the unknown.